I finally found a filming angle that you're not gonna see all of my stuff and I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. If you're new here, I don't wanna put my foot in the camera. We don't wanna give the foot fetish away for the internet. I did that once. It's one of my most popular YouTube videos. So you know what, actually? Here, have it. <laughs> My name's Stephanie. If you're new here, I make a lot of videos on travel, food, lifestyle, especially vlogging and my life as an American in Paris. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and a subscribe because I love to do it and I want to grow a beautiful YouTube community and maybe one day this could be my job so that I no longer have to be suffering with a lot of other things in my life. Okay, today's video, I want to make a video about living in New York City versus Paris. If you guys have been following my channel for a long time, you know that this time last year I was temporarily living in New York City. I lived near the West Village. Not Near. I was in the West Village, I was in Chinatown, I had an Airbnb in your Hill Square in Midtown one time, so I know New York City very, very well, and now I live in Paris, which I also know very, very well. And I have no plan for this video, but what I am going to do is I'm going to pull up my budget chart, and I have different categories in my budget chart for my Paris living budget chart, and I want to talk about the differences in prices for those two cities for things. So, for starters, rent. Rent in New York City. I am in so many NYU subletting Facebook groups and I just haven't stopped being in them just because I find it amusing to look at what's available in the city, what's not. Rent in New York City is so exorbitant and expensive. It's un it's unfathomable, truly. I was getting a really good deal off of what I was paying when I was staying in my cousin's apartment because she was my cousin, she was doing me a favor. But that 700 square foot bedroom apartment, one bedroom, one other, it's technically one bedroom, but they made it into two with one of them being an office made into a bedroom. That place you guys saw, if you remember it, 700 square feet, that was like $5,000 a month, I think, just for that from when I zillowed it online. Rent in Paris is so much cheaper than it is in New York City. Yes, the apartments are smaller, but honestly, I am very used to my apartment. I love my apartment. My apartment is the one good thing to happen to me after all of my crises this past, these past two years. Uh, you get used to it. I have everything that I need in, need in here. I have a full bathroom. I have a stove top. I have a freezer, fridge. I have an oven. I have Wi-Fi. I got windows. I mean, I don't really need much else, that's, that's just me though. So yeah, no, there will never be a such thing as an apartment as small as one like this in New York City, but the rent is way more expensive there. So again, it's just very representative of the different lifestyles, the culture, New York and the US really value big spaces and, and capitalism and they really value, you'll never see an apartment this small because here it's more, okay, I don't care if I have a small, if I have a small apartment, but I'm in Paris, I can go out, I can go to a cafe, I have all these opportunities for me. Whereas in New York is also, the same thing as the city that never sleeps, but rent is much more expensive. I was going to rent, if I was gonna try and go back to New York City, I found an apartment in Chelsea, it was $1,400 a month. And yes, I'm paying, I have much smaller space here, but my rent is significantly cheaper. It's about $1,100 a month. You cannot find anything in New York City for $1,100 a month alone. You just can't. That's, that's the price of renting a bedroom. So that's common here, but I think a lot more people have their own apartments here. So something that's different between New York City and Paris is I think it's much more common and you'll see expats even like myself that are not completely on their feet that can still live alone just because the tiny apartments and the prices allow for it. Okay, let's move on to the next groceries. The thing about grocery shopping in New York City, which was fun because it was like healthy and I felt really healthy doing it. The most affordable grocery options in New York City, like in Manhattan, are only Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. That's where I did all of my grocery shopping when I lived in New York City. Anything anything that Trader Joe's didn't have, because Trader Joe's is actually really good. Trader Joe's I think is the cheapest grocery shopping in the city, but anything Trader Joe's wouldn't have, I'm trying to think of an example, but something really simple that I wouldn't buy at Trader Joe's, I had to go get it at Whole Foods. And Whole Foods is very expensive. So I didn't spend much on groceries in New York City, but also I did I wasn't getting myself set up so I didn't have a lot of pantry items that I like to keep here Like I literally just went grocery shopping to refill pantry items That's not something that I was doing when I was in New York City. I was spending about $35 anything between 28 to $42 max a week on groceries. That is also what I spend here approximately. However, I am going on trips. I do my grocery shopping a little bit differently here because I do it not, I still go weekly grocery shopping, but I also get a lot of little things as I'm going, if that makes sense to refill my pantry. So if I have a free day, like today, free afternoon, I'm like, oh, 
gonna take a walk to a show and I'm gonna go get hot sauce and Nutella, that kind of stuff that I wasn't constantly restocking when I was in New York because when I was in New York, I was on the move. If you remember that fun time in my life. Okay, phone and internet. Phone and internet and data is so much cheaper in Europe. I pay approximately like 50 US dollars for super high speed internet and 70 freaking gigabytes a month. If my T-Mobile plan was a singular T-Mobile plan, it costs about 80 US dollars a month. And then internet's another $60 a month. So you literally pay a third to half of what you pay in New York City for phone and internet. It's fantastic. Paris was on that, sorry. Transportation. Okay, so when I was in New York and even just growing up, so my mom's in New York, I'm sure you guys have heard this on the channel before. I grew up spending a lot of time visiting Manhattan over the years and I never, ever took the subway with my mom. I took the subway for the first time in 2017 when I went with a friend for a day trip and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. But also, I think both Paris and New York are such walkable cities. Here in Paris, I don't pay for an Evago Pass. I walk everywhere. I can live my day-to-day -day life not needing to pay for public transportation, which is fantastic. But in New York, I think in New York, I never paid for it either. Like only when I went with friends and following trips when they didn't want to walk. I think New York and Paris are both super walkable that you don't, if you're lucky enough that you live close enough to walk to things, you don't absolutely need it. However, the Metro Pass is half the price that it is in New York City. It's about 80 US dollars here and it's like 170 or $150 in New York. I don't know, but Paris wins. Again, my camera battery is blinking at me, so my camera may die. Other things are kind of that I don't want to talk about that are just other expenses that I don't think are very important. What I want to talk about definitely is the lifestyle. So in New York City, something that I always tell people that I find so enchanting about New York City and New York City's true charm is its never ending effervescent sense of hope. You constantly see people striving, the hustle, you feel that energy because that's what people are really there for in Manhattan. You don't feel that same energy here, but that's obviously not what I came here for. Both cities are very good for artists like myself. You have the freedom to express yourself. However, here in Paris, I really feel that the daily life here is much more curated to that of an artist. The French culture really appreciates slow living, slow breakfasts, coffee with your friends, talking with your friends, enjoying a meal slowly, whereas in New York, you don't have that it's rapid fire sitting down in a restaurant in manhattan's not the same so at the end of the day the true difference between living in new york city and living in paris you know people say that or your friends are a reflection of who you are i think that's the stupidest thing i've ever heard no offense i think where you live is the biggest reflection of who you are so at the end of the day the two cities are going to represent more so what you want out of life for me i want a very simple life i want to just share things that i make i don't care how much money that i make new york also values life the life of an artist but it really does pertain more to that socioeconomic class, how much you're making, you have that US lifestyle of less vacation time, uh, not enjoying things like something that super shocked me when I was in New York in November after not being in New York since January of last year, were the to-go coffee cups everywhere because that's just not something that happens here in Paris. You'll never see someone taking coffee to go. Everyone sits and enjoys their meals, enjoys their coffee. And it's not that you can't do that in New York, but it is evident that it is much harder to do it in New York. I felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb with many things that I would do in New York. When I went back, sat in Bryant Park, was journaling in the chaos. It's just some things aren't a fit. Overall, I love both cities. You guys know this. New York City's like my second home. My phone thinks that New York City, <laughs> when, I, when I have pictures of the pier, it thinks New York City, it marks it as home also, as well as my parents' house in Potomac and my apartment here. So I'm home to a lot of places. Manhattan will always be my home. Those are some of the really big differences. Also the ease of traveling, living in Europe. There's so much traveling that I want to do this year, but obviously we're in the midst of Omicron. I don't feel that it's very responsible to go do that right now. But one of the many reasons why I love living in Europe is the ease of travel. Going to Switzerland was so beautiful and easy this past fall. I can't wait to go back in the spring sometime when Omicron dies. But that's another thing that's just so different is the ease of connectivity, the ease of different backyards of cultures and food and language. The thing is also though, New York City also has that within itself, right? You have all these different neighborhoods, but so does Paris. So really, you can't compare the two cities because they're so different in how they feel when you're in them. New York City really is a place that you go when you're broken and you need a place that reminds you that life keeps going without your consent or not. Paris is a place where you kind of sit with those feelings instead of moving forward and you're like pushing through. 
Paris is a place where you come to really sit with it. And there's a saying that, a quote that I always tell people by Dorothy Parker, London is satisfied, Paris is resigned, but New York City is hopeful. It seeks light at every corner or something, something like that, the cool code. It's really true. It's like what your who holds your heart. And Paris is really what holds my heart. The city feels so much like home to me in a, in a way that none of the homes I've had in my life, and I've had a lot of different homes in my life, in a way that no place really ever has. And it's really beautiful and satisfying for me. If you guys have any questions about the differences between the two cities, I'm happy to answer them, my experiences more in depth. And I hope you like and subscribe to this video and my channel. Be sure to look at my blog because I've posted a lot of content about Paris and New York as well as scour my YouTube channel There is so much New York City and Paris content on this channel. You won't be disappointed So I hope you like this video subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye